muted. I was muted there for a second. Apologize. Hey guys, it's Tim and this is Pro Wrestling Unlimited as we are here on, what's the day's date? The 8th of July 2020 to talk about everything that went down tonight at AEW Fighter Fest and NXT Great American Bash. As you guys can probably tell, my voice is feeling a lot better, but I do still have this GD cough. So you guys are going to notice that I'm going to automatically because, well, I don't want to cough in your ears when you guys are listening, but with that, we are going to talk about these two shows here tonight. I thought both shows were really, really fun. I thought both shows were equal. I... I don't know if I can pick a clear winner, but I guess if I have to pick a winner, mm, uh, that's a tough one because I felt like a tiny bit more was better at Fighter Fest than Great American Bash, but that main event of Great American Bash, I just loved it so much. I loved Keith Lee. Adam Cole, and my glasses are all smudged to hell. Oh, there we go. I loved Adam Cole and Keith Lee, though. So it's kind of like, which way do I go? Which way do I go? And I think I'm going to just call them even, to be completely honest. But we are going to start tonight by talking about AEW, AEW Fight for the Fallen. No, that's next week. AEW Fighter Fest Night 2. Dos. So the show kicked off with, I think, the perfect match to kick it off, the AEW World Tag Team title match. Some might have said, oh, it's a title match. It's your main event. It's the only title match. Mm, no. I feel like Private Party, nothing against Private Party, but I don't feel like them as challengers was big enough to go up against Keith Lee and Adam Cole. And I think the only thing they had that was big enough to go up against that match was was the um what's it called was the 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 main event tonight Jericho and Orange Cassidy <coughs> Sorry for that that I muted it before I started coughing but the show started off with the tag team title match and I thought this was a great opener and a really fun match Omega and Mark Quinn kicked things off Quinn used a head scissors takedown and a trip takedown to set up a standing moonsault attempt. Omega got his knees up and cut, cut Quinn off. Page and Omega hit a series of chops. Page hit a follow-away slam with a bridge for a two. Omega missed a Kataru Crusher. Isaiah Cassidy tagged in and hit the silly string on Kenny Omega. Page and Quinn brawled on the floor where Paige threw Quinn over the barricade. Cassidy hit a spectacular springboard dive to the floor. All four guys jumped in as the match broke down. Quinn and Cassidy hit double Spanish flies on Omega for a near fall. Cassidy got another near fall off of a backbreaker. Paige blind tagged himself in and power bombed Quinn on top of Cassidy. At one point, Cassidy hit a moonsault off the post to Omega on the floor. Cassidy cut Page off as he went for a buckshot lariat on Quinn. Quinn then hit a shooting star press on Page, but Omega broke up the pin at the last, and when I say last, po last possible second, I mean last freaking possible second. Omega and Page blocked the gin and juice, and they hit Quinn with the V-trigger. Omega and Page then hit the last call. On Cassidy and Page scored the pinfall victory, retaining the tag team titles. After this match, they previewed the rest of the card. And next up, we got Lance Archer versus Joey Janela. And honestly, I wasn't that big of a fan of this match. If I was being 100%. And this was basically what we knew it was going to be. A Lance Archer showcase. Archer entered with Janela's tag team partner, Sonny Kiss, and a fireman's carry on his shoulders. Archer launched Kiss into Janela. Janela came back with a dive off the post. Janela set up a table outside, and my first thought was, wait. Two things. A, has the match even officially started? And B, if it has, when did this become no disqualification? Uh, 
And then, well, my answer was made. Yes, it has started, and no, it's not Noah's qualification because he jumped in the ring with a chair and tried to get on the top rope when the referee was like, hey, you can't do that, and he took it away, giving Archer time to recover. Archer hit a bounce, then targeted Janela's back with stomps. You can see welts forming on the back of Janela and on his chest a little too. Archer continued working Janela over as we went into the commercial break. Going into the commercial, we got a little preview of Cody. He's going to be on the Hot Ones show. They advertised this throughout the show. After the break, Janela was making a comeback with clotheslines. Like, Janela getting his ass beat. And then all of a sudden after the break, he's just in control, basically. How? He hits the clotheslines, but Archer doesn't leave his feet. Archer then went for the blackout, but Janela countered into an elbow drop for a near fall. Jake Roberts would jump up on the apron with a snake bag, and, and he distracted the referee. Janela hit Archer with a senton. Kiss hit a 450 splash. Janela went for the pin, only got a two. Archer hit blackout through the table that Janela had set up earlier. Archer threw Janela inside the ring and pinned him. Again, ref, shouldn't that have been a DQ if you put him through a table? Anyways, uh, the match was all right. I didn't really care much for it, though. Uh, we had a Darby Allen hype video. Allen said that he's been out of the ring for a month, and he hasn't forgotten that Brian Cage is the one to do that to him. Allen hit a coffin drop off of a, a tall platform into a foam pit. Tony Schiavone came down to the ring and interviewed, introduced Taz and Brian Cage. Um, Taz brought out a black bag and he said that this, this bag was something he created years ago with his blood, sweat, and tears. It was the FTW world championship. Taz had no promotion. Taz said no promotion has ever recognized the FTW title, but fans around the world recognize that whoever holds the title is the baddest son of a bitch on the planet. And my first thought was who, what fan thinks that? Because I think of the FEW title as nothing more, nothing more than a fucking prop. I said it. It's just a goddamn prop. I never thought that this title meant anything. I never thought that this title was cool or anything. Taz couldn't get, win the ECW belt, so he created his own. Yeah, he defended it a couple of times against Bam Bam Bigelow and, and Sabu, and I think Sabu even beat him for the title. But fuck. Who's ever 100% really cared about the FTW title? Taz out here saying that, that the fans think whoever holds this title is the baddest son of a bitch on the planet. No. No. I don't agree with that whatsoever. And Tony Khan, that motherfucker, trying to hype this up like it's the biggest announcement they've ever had, saying and saying they're gonna they're gonna send shockwaves through the world of professional wrestling. Oh, fuck off with AEW and all of their goddamn announcements. They always say we got a major announcement, huge big old announcement, and then it's usually nothing. And to me, this was nothing. Like. What is this going to be in AEW? Cage is going to lose to Moxley next week, and then he's going to go, well, I'm still the FTW champion, so ho, 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 I'm still a bad motherfucker. No. At least to me, doesn't mean shit. <laughs> Taz said the FTW championship, in some regard, uh, is some renegade shit. He said Cage is the FTW champion and will soon be the AEW world champion. Taz continued on with his promo. I thought Taz's delivery was good here, but I, I've never gotten into the FTW title. To me, it was always just something Taz created in ECW to say, well, I can't win the world title, but hey, here's this title I created. Fuck off. 
Especially Tony Khan in his, this will send shockwaves through the world of professional wrestling. It's like Moose in TNA, or in Impact, saying, I'm the TNA world champion. I mean more than, than the Impact world champion. Ah, oh, fuck off with all that fake title bullshit. So next up, we got a great eight-man tag team match. It was the Young Bucks and FTR taking on the Butcher, the Blade, Pentagon, and Phoenix. Uh, this match was near incredible, if not right at the incredible mark. Pentagon and Nick started off the match, but Pentagon demanded that Harwood tag in. Harwood and Pentagon. No, Harwood and Wheeler went after Pentagon's left arm. Pentagon came back with kicks to Harwood. Pentagon hit a, a double stomp off the top. Pentagon, or Phoenix tagged in, hit a springboard kick. And only got a one count off of it. Um, after this, there was a lot of chaos going on with everybody just brawling. The Bucks doubled up and hit tandem drop kicks and super kicks. Butcher and Blade jumped in and cut off the Bucks. FTR made the save for the Bucks. Phoenix and Nick ended up the legal men. Nick hit a, a super Frankensteiner for a near fall. Wheeler jumped in and hit a dragon sleeper. Finally, the heels cut off Wheeler and worked him over through the commercial break. Matt got a tag and ran wild, hitting some double high crosses. He hit a standing slice bread on Phoenix. He hit a dive off the post to the butcher and the blade. Matt hit a top rope elbow on Phoenix and only got a two count off of it. Harwood blind tagged in and hit a DDT on the blade. Harwood and Matt hit tandem super kicks. Never seen Harwood hit a super kick before. They be doing some stuff in AEW that they never would have done in WWE. I mean, Cash Wheeler diving off the top rope. Harwood doing super kicks. Wheeler and Nick then hit the Goodnight Express. Harwood and Wheeler went for a spike pile driver on Blade. Butcher made the save. Nick completed the spike pile driver. Harwood covered and got pulled out of the ring. Harwood and Matt hit tandem suplexes. Wheeler hit a, a springboard splash. Nick hit a swanton bomb. And Pentagon broke up the pin. Matt and Pentagon ended up the legal men. Phoenix hit a springboard destroyer on Nick off the second rope to the floor. Insane looking spot here. The finish saw Matt accidentally hit Harwood with a kick. Pentagon and Phoenix hit Matt with their a fire driver and picked up the victory. So with that, the Butcher, the Blade, and the Lucha Bros, Pentagon and Phoenix, did defeat the Young Bucks and FTR after a little bit of what you would call, I don't want to say confusion, but what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know how to, how to say this. What's, what, what am I thinking of? Live chat, help me out. Not confusion, not misdirection, but... Oh, fuck it. Matt accidentally kicked Harwood. That's what happened. There's a, there's a word for it. So, Alex Marvez and some unnamed legal representative greeted Big Swole as she arrived at the building way late. Like, she's got her bags, and the show's already started. Like, first off, well, I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, Big Swole was served some suspension papers. The announcers explained that Britt Baker petitioned AEW to have Swole suspended for kidnapping her. Now, here's my thing, and I think Chuck Taylor said this on Twitter as well. <coughs> Big Swole, first off, you're supposed to be there before the show starts, not an hour into the show. So, her showing up late, showing up whenever she wants... That's that's grounds for suspension right there. If you've got a call time, I think Chuck Taylor said call time of 2, 2 p.m. Well, she was there at 9 p.m. Next up, we got Nyla Rose in a handicap match. She took on, I think her name was Killian King or Kylan King, something like that, and Kenzie Page. <laughs> A Rose won a basic squash match, hitting a beast bomb on Page on top of King and went for the pin. Rose then cut a promo after the match. 
She said the actions, her actions speak louder than words and her actions spoke loudly here tonight. She proceeded to say more stuff. Rose said that she sees all the great wrestlers in AEW with managers and most of them will have titles. She said that she's going to have a manager, but she's not ready yet to say who that manager is. Rose then turned her attention to Hikaru Shida. Hikaru was sitting in front row. She said the manager will ensure that she will leave AEW with Hikaru Shida's title very soon. And I have no clue who this manager is going to be. I would assume it's some sort of a legend. I mean, the first thing that pops into my mind, Medusa. That's the first name that I think it could be, is Medusa. I mean, you get a former women's wrestler, women's champion, badass to manage Nyla Rose. And I see in the live chat, people are asking Vicky Guerrero. I don't think that's going to work. Because that would make Nyla a comedy act because Vicky is a comedy act per se. Because do we really need... Nyla Rose was somebody coming out there, excuse me, excuse me. That's a comedy thing. That's a gimmick. No, we need fucking tatted up, badass Medusa coming out and managing Nyla Rose. That's who I think it should be. I think it should be Medusa if I'm going to say anybody. Yeah, you can get a male to do it. It doesn't have to be a female, but I think it would work perfectly with Medusa. So next up, we see Colt Cabana in the trainer's room. The trainer said that Colt had a hematoma after being whipped into the railing backstage last week. And he has been cleared to compete, though. And Colt had a nasty bruise all the way up his side. All the way up his side. It was gnarly. Mr. Brody Lee said, Colt, things like this will not happen to you in the future if you allow the Dark Order, to watch your back. If you join the Dark Order, I will make sure things like this never happen again. And Colt stood up, and he was basically like, understand, thank you, Mr. Brody. So, I don't know where this is going, but we got Brody Lee, Colt Coban, and Stu Grayson taking on SCU, Scorpio Sky, Frankie Gazarian, and Christopher Daniels. I thought this was another fun tag team match. Um, give me two seconds, guys. I may have some breaking news. So I wouldn't call this a breaking news, but Triple H sent out a tweet that basically makes it makes it seem like Adam Cole done in NXT and could be coming up main roster. <coughs> so Grayson and Daniels started out this match Grayson got some offense before Daniels cut him off Kazarian tagged in and hit a release German suplex for a two Cabana and Sky tagged in Cabana sold his ribs and Sky grabbed grabbed him grabbed him uh, Lee began yelling at Cabana from the apron as if he was angry that Cabana was showing any signs of weakness after a break Lee was in control and slammed Scorpio Sky. Grayson hit a splash off the top for a two. Sky came back with a kick to Cabana's ribs and a neck breaker. Kazarian and Lee got tags. Kazarian hit a one-legged drop kick, blocked a boss man slam, and hit a springboard DDT. Lee hoisted Kazarian up. Daniels hit him with a missile drop kick, and Kazarian covered for a near fall. Kazarian then hit Grayson with a slingshot cover cutter. Lee hit that boss man slam on Kazarian. Daniels hit a top uh, tope suicida to Lee. Daniels hit Grayson with a, a moonsault, but Cabana broke up the pin. Lee then jumped in and hit Daniels with a discus lariat. He then ordered Grayson to tag Cabana to cover Daniels for a pin. So with that, Dark Order and Colt Cabana do pick up the victory over SCU. So we learned that next week, at Fight for the Fallen, Cody will be defending the TNT Championship. Now, Cody was live tweeting during the show and did announce that he will be defending against Sonny Kiss. 
FTR versus the Lucha Bros will be taking place next week. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks will be taking on Jurassic Express. That's a very, very random ass match. And John Moxley will be defending the AEW World Title against Brian Cage. So going forward, Big Swole entered the arena and she confronted Britt Baker. Swole balled up her suspension papers and threw them in Baker's nose. Baker sold this like she had been shot in the face with a pellet gun. And I was like, mm, I know this is going to lead to Big Swole versus Britt Baker at All Out, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Now, now what are they going to have to do? Double suspend a Big Swole because she was suspended and still snuck into the building? But with that, we move into our main event. Remember, guys, if you guys want to let me know what you thought of tonight's show, either AEW Fighter Fest or Great American Bash, you can do so by texting in to 510-906-1341. Again, the number to text in is 510-906-1341. So Orange Cassidy ran wild at the outset of this match. He hit a suicide dive and whipped Jericho into the barricade. Excalibur pointed out on commentary that Jericho hurt his arm and that he uses for the Judas effect. Back inside the ring, Jericho cut off Cassidy and put him in the walls. Cassidy reached the ropes for a break, but Jericho had turned the tide. Cassidy took a mad ball shot from Santana and Ortiz on the floor. Cassidy used three quick cradles, but only got near falls off of them. Cassidy missed a Superman punch and rolled outside. Jericho hit him with the baseball slide. Jericho worked Cassidy over through a commercial break. Cassidy came back with the head scissor takedown and short kicks before winding up and hitting a, a real super kick for a two. Jericho at one point missed a dive to the apron and fell to the floor. Jericho hit a springboard dive, though. Or no, Cassidy hit a springboard dive. Cassidy threw Jericho back in the ring and hit a DDT, a diving DDT, off the top for a two. Cassidy then called for the uh, Superman punch. I think he calls it actually the Super Orange Punch or something like that. Uh, yeah, since Saturday in the chat says Super Orange Punch. But Jericho caught him coming in and used the walls to Jericho. Cassidy turned the hold into a cradle. Only got a near fall off of it. And then did hit that super orange punch. And then, well, he got hit with some punch of his own. When Santana Ortiz threw orange juice in his face. And how this is not a disqualification of what sort. I don't know. Like, when somebody on the outside. I guess they didn't touch him. So that's why it's not a DQ. But that's like saying. Oh, I hit him with a kendo stick, but my hands didn't touch him. So I think this should have been a DQ as well. Jericho then hit the... No, no, no. Or best friends then ran down and brawled with Santana and Ortiz. Jericho used a baseball bat on Cassidy with the ref distracted, but Cassidy kicked out. Jericho then hit the back elbow. Cassidy hit a Michinoku driver and only got a two. They traded strikes. And Cassidy hit a stun dog millionaire and a tornado DDT for a near fall. Cassidy then went for another super orange punch, but ran right into a Judas effect. Jericho pinned him and boom, picked up the victory. Chris Jericho defeats Orange Cassidy. And then the show just goes off the air. That was it. Nothing big, nothing major, nothing special happens. So, we'll see where it all leads to. Jericho just beats Orn Cassidy. So, with that, that was AEW a Fighter Fest. Now, we also had tonight NXT Great. American Bash. 
So the show kicked off with a street fight. And I thought, you know, this is pretty fun. I thought this wasn't a bad show or a bad match. Um, they fought in the ring early on until the fight spilled to the outside pretty quickly. They posted each other and they left the ring to brawl around the building. LeRae blinded Yim with a fire extinguisher at one point and then tried to suplex her off of a stage through a table. Yim blocked the suplex and then she threw a drop kick. LeRae with the nasty plunge through a table um, it was showing to commercial break. We saw picture in picture stuff. When the show came back, they were brawling. Still, the ring now covered in weapons, mostly chairs. Lorray threw even more chairs into the ring. She also bridged a table on the top rope. Yim fought back and dropped Lorray with a double with a kick. We then had a double down spot before Yim made a comeback and fired up on Lorray. Yim put a trash can over LeRae's head, kicked it, and then did a cannonball into the corner where Candice was sitting. Yim then reached in her pocket and pulled out brass knucks. Candice blocked the brass knuck shot with a chair. They, the announcers sold it as if Mia almost could have possibly broke her hand punching the chair with the brass knucks. Candice then slammed Mia on the chairs, the pile of chairs, and then laid some chairs on top of Mia. She climbed to the top on top of the table that was bridged. But Mia just got up and climbed up there with her. Kind of a nothing spot there with burying her in the chairs. <clears throat> when Usually when someone gets buried in chairs, it's usually a nothing spot. And this was the same. I feel like that's the new thing in wrestling. When you have a street fight or a no disqualification fight, especially in WWE. You got to do that spot where the ring's covered in chairs. Someone gets slammed on it or, or suplexed through him or something. So they're fighting on top of the table. And Candice pulls the um, brass knucks off of Mia's hand. Mia's throwing shots to the head, shots to the head, shots to the head. Before Candice finally hits a shot with the brass knucks. Candice then hits a spinning neck breaker off of the top. Off of the top rope slash table onto the pile of chairs. Both men, or both women, sorry. Both women lay there. As Candace falls down, her arm drapes over Mia Yim barely. Referee goes for the count. One, two, three. Candace LeRae does defeat Mia Yim. So during the commercial break, they showed both women slowly get into their feet. LeRae rolled out of the ring. Yim saves some face as she was able to get to her feet as well and walk out on her own power. Next up, we got Bronson Reed versus Tony Nese. Basically, the story of this match was Bronson Reed defeated... What's his name? Oh, I didn't write it down. Defeated Leon Ruff a few weeks ago, but then showed him some respect after the match. Tony Nese defeated Leon Ruff and then showed him no respect after the match. So, Bronson wanted to, I guess you could say, beat some respect into Tony Nese. Reed had the early advantage until Nice trapped him in the uh, apron skirt. Nice capitalized as he began working over Reed. Nice continued his onslaught, but Reed soon was fighting back. Reed was manhandling Nice when Nice was able to uh, snap Reed's, uh, Bronson Reed's neck on the top rope. Nice followed this up with a super crazy springboard moonsault for a two. The finish of the match saw Reed mow down Nice with a huge lariat. Reed then jumped off the top with a splash and covered Tony Nice to pick up the victory. We then got a vignette highlight for the return tonight of Mercedes Martinez. Robert Stone was backstage saying we were about to witness history. Stone got angry at Shotzi Blackheart because she did not want to join the Robert Stone brand though. He threw his cup of coffee over his shoulder. Much to the chagrin, Killian Dane was hit with the coffee cup. He was very upset by this, so he grabbed Stone by his lapels and threw him into a cart. Blackheart then ran over Stone's leg with her a mini tank. Stone screamed in pain, and I guess, well, that was it. And actually, 
when WWE says, hey, or when people say WWE doesn't follow up on stuff, this was a huge follow up. Because a few weeks back, we saw Killian and Dane take on Punishment Martinez or, or what's his name in WWE? Fuck. Um, not Punishment Martinez. Damian Priest. And afterwards, after Damian Priest had won, Killian Dane was all mad walking up the st- uh, the ramp. And and freaking Robert Stone was leaning up against the, the plexiglass. So Dane looks at him, screams at him, smacks the plexiglass, and knocks down Stone. So this, this is paying that off, basically. Where it's like, WWE never pays anything off. They do something and it never means nothing. Well... NXT does, and that was it right here. Undisputed Era arrived at the building. No Kyle O'Reilly, of course. Johnny Gargano took on Isaiah Swerve Scott, because you can't say his name without saying Isaiah Swerve Scott. I thought this was a really, really good, fun match. These guys pair up perfectly together. The match began with some grappling on the mat before some. the pace quickened. They built to a Flodsbury flop spot by Swerve, but before the commercial break. Um, The show returned from break with Gargano in control, and Swerve soon cut him off. A pop-up flatliner by Swerve netted a two count. They traded near falls as Gargano hit Swerve with a spear for another two. They traded strikes and kicks when Swerve caught Gargano with the house call. That led into a double down spot. Gargano was soon able to apply an STF. Swerve escaped the hold, but after a tilt to whirl a moment later, Gargano got a submission for the victory. Oh no, got in his submission finisher. That wasn't the victory. I digress. I wrote this wrong. Um. Oh, okay, I yeah. Okay, I got it. Sorry about that. I wrote it wrong. Swerve escaped the Gargano escape. And Swerve then executed a Falcon Arrow. Swerve went for a double stomp off the turnbuckle to the floor, but Gargano avoided it. He posted Swerve and then gave him a poison rana on the floor. This then led to Gargano slingshotting into the ring with a with his signature slingshot DDT. Gargano then covered Swerve and picked up the victory. Jani beats old Swerve. We then got a great video package hyping up Tegan Knox versus Io Shirai. This title match will be taking place next week on NXT. We then got six-man tag team match. Oh, this match was okay. I thought it was just a solid six-man tag match. Nothing um, outstanding or anything, but I thought it was it was a good solid match. So, it was El Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, Raul Mendoza, and Joaquin Wild taking on the team of Drake Maverick and Brizongo, Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Um, Brizongo spoofed being luchadors during their entrance. That was kind of funny. Mendoza and a wild wore matching gear this week and Escobar wore some similar type gear. Um, the heels worked over breeze early on a hot tag later led to Fandango cleaning house though. Fandango press slammed Maverick over his head and threw him outside onto the heels. Fandango springboarded with a flip dive, impressive looking flip dive, onto the heels outside. Fandango got up selling his knee though, and then his knee was rammed into the ring steps. The heels got the heat on Fandango, and at first it didn't work over the leg, but then they eventually went to targeting the leg and the knee. Maverick ran wild after a hot tag. He was a house of fires, exploded on Escobar. However, Escobar was able to take control. Escobar was able to crotch Maverick on the turnbuckle. Escobar then gave him a phantom driver and pinned him for the victory. So El Legado del Fantasma does pick up the win. Next up, Santana Garrett comes out to take on the returning Mercedes Martinez. These two work really well together. I don't think this is the first time they've ever worked together. I believe they worked together plenty on the indies. 
And I guess Mercedes Martinez is the new badass female of NXT. She's taking the Shayna Baszler spot, it seems like. She came out and immediately felt like a just superstar. Superstar. Martinez, Martinez wasted no time in clubbing Garrett. Garrett fought back briefly as she applied a Cobra twist. Garrett also did a handspring back elbow at one point, but Martinez no-sold it, mowed her down, and hit her with a high kick. Martinez then grounded and pounded on Santana Garrett. Martinez dashed a hope spot before delivering the Fisherman's Buster Suplex and picking up the victory on Santana Garrett. So I hope Mercedes Martinez is the new badass woman of NXT, taking that, like I said, Shayna Baszler spot. Next up, a video played hyping up the rivalry of Cameron Grimes and Damian Priest. A match between the two is official for next week. Then, we had our main event. And this match did not disappoint. For me, and maybe others aren't going to feel the same, I felt this was match of the night. I felt that it may have been, and again, some may not agree, the best of the two night specials. Better than anything AEW did and better than anything NXT did last week or this week. So it started off with a methodical pace. Cole was cocky, but Lee shut him down quick. Cole begged off, but he bailed or he baited Lee into following him outside the ring. At one point, Cole sidestepped a pounce by Lee and Lee smashed through the guardrail and the plexiglass. Cole went to work over on Lee and Cole got cocky again, though, and started taunting Keith Lee. That angered the big man, and Cole dashed a hope spot. Cole went back to working over Lee. He called him a nobody at one point. And Cole claimed that Lee can't win the big one. Lee soon hulked up and peppered Cole with punches. Lee with a huge power slam for a near fall here. Cole cut him off and tripped up Lee with in the ropes. Cole with a backstabber on Lee looked to regain the advantage. Lee cut him off, and Lee deadlifted him into a superplex for a, a big pop that planted uh, in in the from the. Let me rewrite, re read what I wrote. Lee deadlifted Cole into a superplex, which got a huge pop from like one person planted in the crowd. Cole fought back. Only for Lee to give him an, a pop-up powerbomb. Lee went for the cover and Cole was able to barely get to the ropes. One finger on that bottom rope broke the, broke the pin. Cole ate a pounce and then took a choke slam of sorts. Cole still managed to kick out of a pinning attempt though. Lee hit a moonsault, a moonsault press for another two. Cole escaped the Big Bang catastrophe and hit a super kick. Lee though, Lee though hulked up. Cole hit Lee with another super kick. Lee hulked up even greater. Cole took out the Lee, Cole took out the legs of Lee with super kicks. Cole followed this up with the last shot. Lee kicked out to fight on. Cole measured Keith Lee for another last shot. But instead, Cole took a nasty bump when Lee caught him with a lariat. Cole somehow managed to recover though. And Cole executed a Panama Sunrise. Lee kicked out again, and Cole was in disbelief. Cole <coughs> Excuse me. Cole would then throw several super kicks Keith Lee's way, and Lee still kicked out yet again. Cole pulled down his knee pad and delivered a last shot and exposed his kneecap. Cole then climbed to the top turnbuckle, seemingly going for a Panama Sunrise. Lee blocked it and gave Cole a spirit bomb. Lee would then hit the Big Bang Catastrophe and pin Adam Cole to become the, the first ever double champion in NXT history. He is still North American champion and the new NXT champion. Lee celebrated with both titles in the ring as confetti rained down and, and Pyro fired up from all sides of the ring. We then see Karrion Cross and Scarlet watching from the rafters above. 
They show Keith Lee again. We go back and Scarlet walks away. They go back to showing Keith Lee. We then see Karrion Cross again watching for he also walks away. Seemingly they're teasing. Karrion Cross wanting to challenge Keith Lee for the title. They already teased Karrion wanting to go for the title. But now that Adam Cole's no longer the champion who he teased at, now he's got to fight Keith Lee. Fuck. Keith Lee versus versus Karrion Cross is going to be amazing. Uh, Hot Rob says, how long was Adam Cole champion? 403 days. Keith Lee held, or Adam Cole held that belt for 403 days. And that was NXT. It went off the air of the huge tease of Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee, we do have NXT TakeOver coming to us on August 22nd, I want to say it is. Let me check the calendar here. August 22nd is TakeOver, so maybe Keith Lee versus Karrion Cross to TakeOver. But with that, that was NXT Great American Bash Night 2. That was AEW Fighter Fest Night 2. And now if I had to rate both shows, I think I'd give them both... A 7.5. Like I said, I liked both shows just as equal. If I had to rate anything higher, I'd go with NXT just because I loved the main event. But overall, I think both shows were about the same. I do have a couple text messages that I do want to read here. Uh, this first one here states... The main event of NXT was awesome. I can't wait for Karrion Cross. Yeah, Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee should be just an amazing banger of a match. Um, this person here says, with Triple H teasing on social media that Adam Cole was done in NXT, do you think that means just Adam Cole or all of Undisputed Era? And that's a good question. Because Adam Cole is amazing with Undisputed Era. Like that, that is just phenomenal. That group. But do they bring them all up? I mean, they took the titles off of Kyle and Bobby. Roddy never really got another fair shot at the North American title. They seemingly kept that belt off of him. So maybe the next time WWE does tape anything is... Let me double check. WWE's next set of SmackDown tapings are... Why don't I have this list? Come on. I had a list here, and I don't know where I saved it to. I believe their next SmackDown taping is the 17th, and their next Raw taping is either the 18th or the 19th. No. 17th for the next SmackDown, which is the go home for, yeah, yeah, okay. So it's the go home for Extreme Rules, and then the night after Extreme Rules, the 20th, is the next um, Raw tapings. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see if all of Undisputed Era comes up, if just Adam Cole comes up, and what they do. But Adam Cole, Adam Cole could be the man. I've said it for a while. Adam Cole could be the heel on the main roster, the number one heel on the main roster, and you make Matt Riddle the number one babyface, bada bing, bada boom, there you go. Now, what brand does Adam Cole go to is the big question. I think he would fit in very well on SmackDown, but I could see him going to Raw. So if I had to choose right now, I would say Monday Night Raw. Um, I do have one more text message here. If it wants to load, come on, come on. For some reason, it doesn't want to load. There we go. This person says, next week after John Moxley successfully retains his title against against um, Brian Cage at Fight for the Fallen, who do you see being the next challenger for Moxley and the title? MJF. As we reported a few weeks ago now, we exclusively reported here on PW Unlimited, the next feud for Moxley going into All Out will be MJF if nothing does change. That has been the plan since Double or Nothing, basically. But with that, that's going to wrap everything up here for AEW Fighter Fest and NXT 
by uh, NXT Great American Bash. Um, with that, we are going to find ourselves somebody to send you guys over to, to watch, to hang out with. Let's send you over. Let's send you guys over to Sad Boy Barrett. Barrett Courtney. All right, Courtney is currently playing some Legend of Zelda. And I'm going to send you guys over there right now. Have a good night, guys. I will see you Friday. I'll see you guys Friday for the SmackDown review.